Welcome to Fox Souls Black Report, your space for black news, views, and opinions. Today's Friday, January 28th. I'm Seth Lemon. I'm Niel. I'm Romeo. I'm Demi Lobo. And on today's report, say her name, the only former cop criminally charged in the police raid that killed Breonna Taylor will soon stand trial as jurors gather at the courthouse today. Meanwhile, the family of another black woman who died mysteriously in Connecticut says authorities never notify them. Then, new numbers show many millennials have upwards of $50,000 in debt. It was as many people worry that they'll never be able to buy a house. Plus, after a long week of headlines, we just need to laugh. So Comedian G Things stops by Fox News Black Report to help us make sense of what's going on in the world and Simply Lemonade could be the go-to drink of the summer as the traditional favorite gets a new adult twist. Sounds like an informative good time. We have that and so much more to talk about, Soulmates. This is our voice and it's our truth, so let's talk about it. Welcome on in this Friday. Say her name, jury selection. It begins today in the trial of the ex cop charged from the botched police raid that killed Brianna Taylor. It's the only criminal trial to come from the grave miscalculation, but Brett Heckinson is not charged for her death. Instead, he faces three low-level felony charges for reportedly discharging his weapon, firing recklessly into Taylor's neighbor's apartments nearly two years ago this March. Neither of the two former officers who shot Brianna Taylor were charged in her death. And it's no consolation for protesters around the country who for months demanded those officers be arrested. Louisville did ban the tactic of so-called no-knock warrants after Taylor's death. And the city also paid $12 million to settle a wrongful death suit brought by her mother. Jury selection is going to take weeks. More than 250 people will be questioned. But the judge said that she would ask jurors not to read, watch, or discuss any of the news coverage about Breonna Taylor's death. One participant who uh, was in those protests said, this is not justice for Breonna. It has nothing to do with Breonna. But it's interesting. This is the only criminal trial that we're going to see from such a terrible incident that sent shockwaves across the country. You know, uh, also in Breonna Taylor news surrounding this, uh, the cop also wants to request during voir dire that uh, the media doesn't watch what's going on inside the courtroom. And so it's really strange to me because I feel like Derek Chauvin got what he deserved in the uh, in, uh, in, in the event of George, uh, excuse me, George Floyd's killing. But I feel like as a result now, uh, people who kill black people feel like the media is going to affect it. And it's like you do the crime, you have to do the time, whether the media is there or not. Uh, uh, me, Demi, you brought up uh, Derek Chauvin, uh, and I think that you could look at the attorney generals of the state. Keith Ellison was adamant about getting justice versus Daniel Cameron, who didn't want to bring up any charges or push his DAs across the state. So I think, again, representation and who we choose to be our attorney generals in our states really matter. It does. And, you know, what? this is bittersweet because, yes, this cop should be brought up for charges, but this has nothing to do with Breonna Taylor. The $12 million cannot bring her back. It just brings up bad and sad moments, moments and memories for the family. President Biden spent the day in Pittsburgh to promote the $1 trillion infrastructure bill that he signed weeks ago. His trip comes the same day a bridge collapsed in the city, injuring 10 people. The bridge had been listed in poor condition for the last decade. The president's trip to the still city is part of a White House plan to get Biden out of Washington. Administration officials want to promote the accomplishments of his first year in office. You know, uh, I hate to be a conspiracy theorist here, but I mean, the, the timing is kind of strange, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. If you ask me. But this is why you have to listen to the people in your city, in your states, because there's a tweet that did not age well back from 2019, where a person in the city uh, tweeted out a photo saying, hey, I hope you guys are looking at this because the, the metal beam behind under the under this bridge was literally almost off. It was rusted. It was it was messed up. And so now four years later, I think it was 2018, actually, four years later, it's like, hey, you guys probably should have listened to the people that were asking to get this fix years ago. I mean, God, but Biden's probably thanking God today for this backdrop. At least no one was hurt mm, seriously right. in this. No one was killed. There were a few injuries. Mm. But Pittsburgh, it's known, as, I'm from Pittsburgh, it's known as the city 
with the most bridges possibly in the world. There are like more than 400 within Pittsburgh city limits and across Allegheny County, there are more than 2000. So this is the perfect backdrop for Biden to talk about infrastructure. But even Pennsylvania, its own records show that more than 10 percent of all the bridges in the state mm -hmm. are graded poor. So clearly there is some need for infrastructure funding. And yeah. the Democratic Party was pushing for Biden as well as Kamala Harris to get out of Washington to begin to promote their agenda in their wins because the Republicans are pounding on them for what they're not doing. So they have to get out to promote what they are doing and what they've done thus far. Mm -hmm. Happening today, the gun that Kyle Rittenhouse used to shoot and kill two protesters and injure a third will be destroyed. It's following a court ruling today. Rittenhouse had asked the court to give him back the weapon, but the court ruled that the state would destroy the firearm. Only his clothing and other personal items that were confiscated that night by authorities will be returned to him. Now, Rittenhouse was acquitted of killing those two people and shooting another during the protest back in Kenosha, Wisconsin in 2020. I can't believe he had the, the goal to ask Undaunted. for the yeah. weapon mm -hmm. that was used to kill. Through. I mean, even if you're a Second Amendment advocate, for him to want to get possession back of that weapon mm -hmm. after everything he's been through, it, it says something about his thinking I mean, but, really and about his character as well not to mention he wasn't even young enough to own a gun so whose gun was this it's not even your gun so why do you want the gun back but we also know too that in the same story that he will get the two million dollars bail money back as well and it's going to be split between the fight back foundation rittenhouse as well as ricky schroeder which is uh, an actor so i mean he's not getting his gun back but he will still get a reprieve but he's been in, he's bail. been empowered because he was found not guilty Absolutely. he's had That's so nice. much support and so this is an example of what white privilege is when you feel that you and see that you could get away with so much you feel like hey let's just go for a throttle and at the end of the day he probably want to try and sell that gun or put mm -hmm. up for auction so i'm glad he's that, not getting that's it a back. good point that's a good Romeo, point, actually, that's a good point. Yes. definitely he, he gives me clout for sure mm -hmm. so that makes a lot of sense a uh, great point romeo so the family of a black connecticut woman was found dead in her house after a date uh she the family they are thanking cardi b for her help with this situation so the family of lauren smith fields they say that Cardi B's Justice for Lauren tweet, it helped spur Connecticut police to open a criminal investigation into the death of the 23-year-old. A medical examiner ruled that her death, an accidental drug overdose, that it was ruled as an accidental drug uh, overdose, but police say a man Fields met on the dating app Bumble called police. The next morning when she was unresponsive, the family believes there is foul play involved. They say she never had a history of drug use and the family also criticized the Bridgeport Police Department saying they were negligent in this investigation. The family of a second black woman found dead in Bridgeport, Connecticut says the police department has not investigated their loved one's death. And just like Lauren Smith Fields family, they say no one ever notified the victims next of kin. 53-year-old Brenda Rawls died in December, a day after telling her family she was headed to visit a man who lived down the street. It was the last time they heard from her. Three days later, while looking for her at the man's house, they claim he said she died in her sleep. The coroner has not yet determined a cause of death. In both cases, the families alleged the police department has not taken the cases seriously. A city council member said neither of the locations were secured or processed for evidence and said she's looking into a pattern with the Bridgeport Police Department. When you think about what Cardi B did, you think about here at Fox News Black Report, sometimes I feel like we all we got. If we don't talk about it, if we don't put it on the front page or the headline news, it's not going to get talked about. This happens in every city across the state, across our country. It's a major problem that we do not get the same attention as others and for them not to investigate this properly this could go all the way up to the police department at the end of the day you know i think that's the worst part for you know you're looking for your family member and to know that someone knows about the whereabouts both of these cases the families have said the police did not tell them the family about where their loved one was and so but i want to i really want to give some props to cardi b we've seen of course with people like kim kardashian as well celebrities using their platform to bring awareness and i'm happy that cardi b can touch music she can touch politics and of course the community as well yeah, I, I spent some time in Connecticut. Um, Bridgeport is in the, the, the metropolitan area that I worked in, and it's it's pretty black. There's about 40% mm -hmm. of the population there that is black, so it's a black city. But it's interesting to see that the same police department, just within a matter of months, felt comfortable enough to go lackadaisically about investigating the deaths of black women. It is a, a strange pattern that needs to be investigated. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, for the third time since October, Oklahoma has executed another person. Donald Grant was 
given a lethal injection this week. Graham was on death row for a couple for a double murder police say he admitted to 20 years ago. But Grant's lawyers say he was not competent to be executed. They told the U.S. Supreme Court the execution should have been delayed until a legal battle over the state's injection protocol was settled. Another execution in the state is scheduled for February 17th. $110,000 a reward is being offered to help find the killer of Tioni Theus. She's the 16-year-old black girl found earlier this month on the side of a Los Angeles freeway. L.A. County District Attorney George Gascon called her death a callous slaying. An outpouring of concern has arisen from the victim's family, community leaders, and elected officials. Joining us now is one of those elected officials, State Assemblyman Mike Gibson. Welcome back to The Black Report. Thank you, Neil. It's good to be here. Uh, so let's start with this. Uh, we saw you went viral. We saw you on several news outlets. You were very impacted by this killing. Um, why did it touch such a chord with you? Because I don't have any daughters, but Tiana was my daughter. Whether or not my DNA matched, whether or not I even heard her name, whether or not we were in the same atmosphere, she was our daughter. If we were going to be part of a village, that every child like her is our responsibility to protect. And I'm you know, sad to say that she was not protected. She was brutally killed and thrown and dumped like a piece of trash on the side of the freeway. And so we had to stand up in a very significant manner. And I'm glad we, have, we were able to co co collaborate together. I was glad that we came together in such a quick time with the DA, uh, George Gascon, Supervisor Holly Mitchell, put forth a motion to asked the County of Los Angeles to put up $10,000. The City of Los Angeles, Marquise uh, Dawson Harris, council member, and also council member Kern Price, did $50,000. And then I asked the, the governor of the state of California, Gavin Newsom, to use uh, a fund that he had at his disposal to also put up $50,000, making it up $110,000. We want these criminals, this person, to be brought to justice, were arrested and convicted of killing this child. I agree. And you know what? When I saw the story about Tioni uh, Theus, it just really got to me. And I'm going to tell you why. Because I am a parent. And I have a radio station here that drives a morning show that we do music only. But we wanted to talk about this, right? Because we felt like a lot of people were not doing that. So what needs to be done to make sure people of color get the same respect and headline news attention? Well, one, we need to make sure that people that look like myself and the Wolves who stood up to our city council board of supervisors continue to want to be in places where we can um, ask for resources to uh, heinous crimes um, like this young child, 16 years old. But understand this, this is not um, new. When you look at in the United States of America, when you look at in 2018, 1,656 um, cases of human trafficking was reported in California, but then out of that case, out of those numbers, 1,226 were sex trafficked. Mm. So this is a growing and emerging situation that's taking place. But then when you couple where the Super Bowl is going to be held in Los Angeles, where it is, it is intensified 10 times over during Super Bowl all across the country, this is where human trafficking, but also sex trafficking is absolutely prevalent, especially when it comes down to our children. We must cover them, and we must do all that we can to put, put a stop to them and put these predators in jail where they belong. Yeah, um, I was definitely impacted by this as well. I have a friend, her name is Robin Patterson. She was found on the side of the freeway duct tape with uh, two shotgun uh, wounds to her chest and she was murdered. Uh, the person who killed her has never been convicted or even identified, so this really touched me. But you brought up human trafficking and I wanted to know, is there any legislation that's happening on Capitol Hill in California to address these heinous crimes and concerns? There are, there are. We just, we're now in the beginning stages of introducing legislation uh, in Sacramento. Um, and there's a number of people, including myself, looking and exploring how can we strengthen and also make it a deterrent, but also hold the perpetrators um, absolutely accountable uh, for what they're doing. This child was shot in the neck, shot at 16 years old. We want to make sure that no other child um, 
uh, have to endure what uh, Tiani uh, Thea has had to endure. We laid her to rest yesterday, but we want to send a clear message. Enough is enough. If you do this, you're going to jail. Yeah, and you know, we live in a world, if you see something, you should say something. And when the first initial uh, reward came out, people were just kind of like, are you serious? Really? This is it? Now, is it possible that more money could be added onto, onto the reward that's already there? I think we're over 100000 now, right? We're 110000 absolutely. We, we absolutely ask uh, celebrities who can elevate their voices. Um, and just by them putting money into this pot um, helps lead us to information that is absolutely critical to solving this murder. We want the parents, even though that uh, this child is not going to be brought back, but we want to make sure that individuals know that there's a reward out there and turn um, anyone that had anything to do with this crime into law enforcement. And we know that the high, California High Patrol Major Crime Unit is uh, doing the investigation, and we ask that people call area code 323-644-644. 9550. They know anything at all. Please call the California Highway Patrol for this rundown. Every and any lead leading to the arrest and the conviction of the perpetrator, this coward who did this to this baby. Yes, it takes a village. Thank you so much for joining us today, uh, Assembly you. Member Mike Gibson. All right, take care. That was a wonderful interview, Neil and Romeo. On to our next story here, a Louisiana, woman, a Louisiana woman accused of throwing her young children into a lake is facing up to life in prison. Eureka Rochelle Black has been charged with secondary murder and attempted murder. Her 10-month-old son drowned, but his five-year-old brother was able to survive. Black sisters say they tried to get her help for her mental health for some time, but she refused to get treatment. I want you to take a look at this security footage from inside a school cafeteria that shows an employee, a white employee, forcing a black child to eat trash, eat food out of a trash can. Check this out. The parents of this child at Palm Elementary School in Lorain, Ohio, say they've been asking for this footage for months. The video is from no November and it shows that nine-year-old student throw some food away and the child, she told them that she did not like the waffle. You see the staff member there pick it up out of the trash and give it back to the student right there to eat. Both the principal and that lunch monitor were fired in December. But for months, the family has been asking to see this video to verify that what their child told them was true. It's a shame it took so long for them to release the footage when they were fired clearly in December because of wrongdoing and to even watch that happen. Mm -hmm. I don't understand what that woman was thinking. Mm -hmm. Re regardless of race, no child should be forced to no. eat something mm -hmm. out of a trash can. Mm -hmm. You know, this was humiliating for the black community as well. It's humiliating just for everyone, for the teacher, the school, everyone across the board. And so, who, you know, I'm, I'm with you, Seth, that who would want to even pick something out of the garbage can? Like, you, you work in hand, you work as, as a server here. You wouldn't, you, that is, that's not sanitary it's to even disgusting. want to reach inside of a garbage can. But also, Absolutely. back in 2019, there was another Ohio boy that said he was humiliated by his cafeteria teacher, uh, cafeteria worker, who humiliated him on his birthday they who denied him food for a $9 outstanding bill. Cafeteria workers are really crossing the line right now. I don't know who they think they are. Sorry about that. Yeah, I agree. As a parent, I wouldn't have left that school until they showed me the video. So if I had to right. sit there one week, two weeks, or a month, I'm camping out because you have the real-time footage. You're going to give it to me if that happens to my child. Believe that. Oh, Absolutely. I'm furious right now. I'm out like, of oh, work. I don't even have children, but yeah. uh, that just story really infuriates me. Uh, a former Michigan high school football player is suing police over their handling of a night. Excuse me, 2019 hazing incident. The lawsuit says police targeted only black De La Salle high school athletes, even though white students were also involved with hazing. The suit says police went out of their way to protect the white kids at the elite school. Multiple black students lost college scholarships, even though criminal charges were dropped against them all. Meanwhile, a white student who was involved in the accident went on to play football at Ohio State. The January 6th committee sent subpoenas today to 14 fake electors who tried to change the outcome of the 2020 election. 
59 local and state Republican leaders are accused of a plot to try and cast fake electoral ballots for former President Trump last year. The fake electors could face federal charges ranging from election fraud to mail fraud. In Arizona, 11 Republicans filed papers falsely claiming to be the state's electors. Georgia had 16, Nevada 6, and the remaining 36 were spread out around the country. You know, this is mind-boggling that Republicans right now, I, I say it all the time, 19 states, voter suppression and voter intimidation laws all across the country. They're saying it's voter fraud. And then this story comes out today to say the biggest people creating fraud with elections is the Republican Party. I am so glad that Benny Thompson, Congressional Black Caucus member, is pushing this committee to not just find out what happened on January 6th, but to look at the big picture of how the Republican Party is creating voter fraud. And we want to wish him a happy birthday because today's his birthday. Definitely want to do that. At the end of the day, we know what happened for the election in 2020, right? President Biden, he won. Without a doubt, it is what it is. Trump hates taking that L. We also know what happened on January 6th, right, with the insurrection. We know who pretty much quarterbacked that situation. It's all there. We have a voicemail. We have audio of Trump trying to get votes in Georgia. All this adds up to who really doing wrong. So at some point, we got to wake up and realize why are we prolonging this issue? Let's get to the bottom right now and get the situation handled. Mm -hmm. All right, so mates. Let me tell you about this. In other election news, supporters of the former president are going after ballot drop boxes. Trump is criticizing a Wisconsin proposal to monitor some drop boxes with 24-hour surveillance cameras. Mr. Trump says Republicans who support the measure are playing into the hands of Democrats. Politicians in other Republican-controlled states like Georgia are proposing bills to outlaw ballot boxes altogether. The Justice Department says there is no proof that ballot drop boxes encourage voter fraud.